Welcome to the sixth lesson in the series. This lesson covers API monetization. When API publishers publish their APIs on the developer portal, they need to have the option to bill the API users for their consumption of each API. Patterns of monetization will differ from API to API. WSO2 API Manager gives you the option to connect a billing plan to APIs in order to monetize them. Each API is exposed over different usage levels. These usage levels are called tiers. Tiers are given different access restrictions. Tiers can be free or they can be billable, in other words, commercial. A single API could have a mix of tiers where the API can be consumed without charges for evaluation and then consumers can later upgrade to a billable tier when necessary. When a publisher exposes an API over several tiers, Consumers can select their tier of preference when subscribing to the API based on their requirements, budget, what they want to achieve, and so on. API consumers are invoiced based on the tiers consumed by the applications they use. A billing engine will typically contain all the billing plans that you have in your enterprise. In the billing engine, you will specify the number of requests you will allow, as well as the rates per day, per month, and what will happen when you go above the specified limit. Each billing plan will have a one-to-one -one mapping with a tier. Tiers are also used for throttling purposes, that is, specifying how many requests an API can handle at a time. The admin dashboard allows you to define tiers. Specify a unique name for the tier. The request count specifies the maximum number of requests allowed within a particular unit time. You can specify the unit time in seconds. Provide a meaningful description for the tier to help consumers understand its purpose. When you are defining a billing plan, you are given the option of allowing users to go beyond their quota and billing them separately for overusage. This works similarly to mobile data plans. Overusage is captured through the analytics layer. The number of requests that fall into the quota and the number that go beyond the quota are calculated. Selecting stop on quota reach would mean that once the limit is reached, the user's requests are dropped. A tier can be either commercial or free. Custom attributes are for display purposes only. This is additional information such as the amount you are charging. An API is determined as free, paid, or freemium depending on the tiers specified on it. If all tiers of an API are tagged as free, the API will be labeled as a free API. And if all the tiers are tagged as commercial, the API will be labeled as a paid API. Freemium means that the API has a mixture of both commercial and free tiers. This labeling happens on the API store only if monetization has been enabled. This is how monetization is enabled. Log in to the API Manager's Management Console and click Resources, Browse. Navigate to the tenant.json file. In the Contents panel, click the Edit as Text link and the tenant-conf.json file opens. To enable monetization categories for APIs, set the Enable Monetization property to True. By default, it is set to false. To define whether the unlimited tier is a paid tier, set the Is Unlimited Tier Paid property to true. If the unlimited tier is free, set it to false. After the edits, click Save Content. When the Enable Monetization property is set to true for the respective tenant, the API monetization category labels are displayed in the Tenant API Store. After publishing the APIs, 
application developers will access the store and start consuming the APIs. In order to invoice them, these users must exist in the billing system. Workflows are used to make sure that the accounts exist in the billing system. A workflow is a set of custom actions based on a user action. Custom business workflows can be engaged for several user actions that are performed in the API store, including subscribing to APIs. First, the system will check whether the API is free or commercial. If free, the user is allowed to move forward. If commercial, the workflow checks to see whether the user exists in your billing system. If not, an HTTP redirect will send the user to sign up in the billing system. The subscription will be created, but it will be in an inactive state and cannot be used until the user is registered in the billing system. When the redirection happens, the workflow sends the billing system a callback URL and the reference ID. In the billing system's user registration page, the user must enter their credit card and other required information for invoicing purposes. Once successfully registered, the user is redirected back to the API store. When the user is redirected back to the API store, the billing system sends the callback URL that was sent when making the initial request, along with the workflow's reference ID. Through this reference ID, the API store knows which subscription to activate. If the user account creation is successful, the subscription is set to an active state so that the user can start consuming the API. The callback endpoint is a secured endpoint, so it needs special privileges to be accessed, and you can also enable things like mutual authentication to make sure people outside your billing system cannot access it. This is a one-time step for any given user and will happen only if their account doesn't exist in the billing system. If it does already exist in the billing system, the subscription will be created in an active state so that they can use it immediately. In summary, when a user sends a request for a subscription, if the tier is free, the response comes instantly. If the tier is commercial, we call the billing system through a subscription workflow. The subscription workflow verifies whether the user is registered in the billing system. If the user is registered, a subscription is created. If the user is not registered, there is an HTTP redirect to the billing system so that the user can register themselves. Until registration is completed, the subscription is inactive. If the payment doesn't happen, you use the Block Subscription REST API to bar API consumption from the application. You can use the Unblock Subscription REST API to re-allow API consumption from the application. The next step is to monitor the usage of the consumers who are using your APIs and to invoice them accordingly. We configure WSO2 Data Analytics Server, or DAS, to enable API analytics. Once configured, you can have six types of event streams. Request event stream, response event stream, throttle, fault, destination, and workflow. These event streams are published into DAS, and the billing engine can use this later to generate the invoice. How do we configure API Manager for Analytics? There are two ways to do this. You can retrieve the statistics using the DAS REST API. API Manager publishes the event streams, and the DAS event receivers capture and process them. Apache Spark in DAS reads the event streams and generates summary data. This summary data is fed into the billing engine and then invoices are generated. In this case, we generate the summary data based on our summary data plan and we take this data from the DAS REST API and feed it to the billing engine. To do this, we need a middle component called the billing agent. Depending on your organization's business data, you might need to get usage by application, by user groups, departments, etc. The REST API is dynamic. You can provide a query and get the data that you require. Your data is not summarized on the client side. The billing agent sends a query through the DAS REST API. The billing agent doesn't have to do anything with the data set. You can also configure analytics using a Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS. This is similar to the REST API approach, except that the summary data is stored in the RDBMS and therefore the billing engine must retrieve the data from that database. The REST API option provides a quicker setup as there is no need for an additional data source. This approach is suitable when there is a limited number of users and APIs and fewer deployment and configuration complexities. 
Apache loosing is used for querying, and since this is suitable for less complex queries, there is lower performance when working with a large amount of data. The RDBMS option is suitable for a large number of users and APIs. This approach provides high performance for large data, supports several RDBMS servers, and is best for more complex queries. However, an additional RDBMS would require extra setup time, and queries that are written will be database dependent. When billing, sometimes we allow the API to be invoked even after the limit is exceeded. As a result, the backend servers may get flooded because there may be unlimited requests that you don't have control over. To avoid this, you can define hard-level throttling limits per API when you create the APIs. You can define the maximum transactions per second. This concludes the lesson on API monetization. Thank you.